We shake it, pour it, stir, and bake it. It's a nutritious part of our everyday diet. But do you ever wonder where the milk in your cereal bowl comes from? In this field trip, we'll visit the dairy industry and see how milk is produced. Field Trip is made possible by Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Did you know the dairy industry produces billions of pounds of milk each year? It's a diverse product used in so many different ways, but so many people are unaware of how it's produced. The dairy industry in the United States expands far beyond milk. From the dairy cow to the packaging plant, and from retailers to consumers. It's a system designed to provide a quality product. That's something we're really proud of. It's one of the most highly regulated industries in the United States is food safety and dairy in particular. Quality is our number one criteria for, for the milk that goes on people's table. And the dairy industry is the most regulated industry and we want it to be of any of the agriculture industries. I think the big thing that, that everybody needs to know is that our livelihood depends on our animals, and it depends on our ability to take care of them, to feed them right, make sure they have good, clean water, and able to manage our business, and that if we don't have a quality product, then we don't have something to sell to the consumer. Cattle were domesticated about 8,000 years ago, so milk has been an important food source since ancient times. When European settlers came to North America, they brought various cattle breeds with them. Early on, dairy came from small farms that would provide milk for the surrounding communities. Before the invention of milking machines and transport systems, cows were milked by hand. But with today's technology, dairies are capable of producing the vast quantities of milk needed to keep up with consumer demand. One of the reasons that uh, the dairy industry in New Mexico has grown to the extent that it has over time is, is of course, the, the almost natural symbiosis between farming and dairying. Being the fact that the farmers will grow the feed for the dairymen, for the cows for the dairymen, and the dairymen produce, of course, the fertilizer that is needed for the farmers to put on their land. And uh, so dairymen are naturally going to look for an environment where they can find that symbiosis, where they can work together with farmers and be mutually helping each other out. Generally, we have excellent weather for dairy cows. Environmentally, it's a good place to be. We have vast land areas. We're not crowded. Cows like the dry weather just like we like the dry weather. And so what's good for us is also good for them. We have normally a, an abundant feed supply. Well, the primary reason, it's because of the weather conditions. It is perfect weather, it's perfect soil, and cows like it, and happy cows make good milk. Despite the tremendous growth of the industry, dairies are often family-run businesses. It's common to find generations of family members working at the same farm. I came here from Arizona in 1976, mm. and uh, it has been a family operation ever since, and my son's directly involved. He's a partner in the business. My son-in-law runs one of our operations. My brother works for us, so we are truly a family operation. I started working at this dairy behind us about when I was eight years old, so. So my first job was uh, doing the wash up, which is uh, sanitizing all the, all the pipes and everything else that the milk travels through. I just kind of enjoyed being out here in the mornings, like when everything's fresh and all the cows are waking up and, and you got all the fresh feed out there and just getting out there and working, working the cows and moving them around. We're all involved in the dairy, um, the dairy life. Uh, my wife, Michelle, and I, she, she's really involved in the promotion side. She does a lot of charity work for and promoting dairy industry. Um, our kids just hang out on the farm and learn and learn every learn things every day that most, most of them kids don't get to learn. 
I grew up, you know, since the age of one on the dairy farm. Whether it be just out with nature, learning cows, um, learning crops, farming, driving tractors since, you know, early ages. It, it's just a family lifestyle that, that I grew up wanting my kids to have the same thing. Dairy farmers use certain breeds like these Holsteins because of their ability to produce a lot of milk. We have predominantly Holstein cows. They're the big black and white cows. They came here, I think, in the 1840s from Holland. We also have Jerseys, a little smaller frame cow. They came here around the same time. They came from the island of Jersey off the coast of England. They give a little less milk, but a little more fat, a little more protein. Their milk is used predominantly for making of ice cream and cheese and, and uh, other hard products from dairy. The Swiss cows, they're not as common, they're real hardy. In fact, years and years ago, they used to be kind of a dual purpose cow, a cow that was made for milk and also made for meat. They're probably maybe 5% of the cows in America might be a brown Swiss breed. We've been pretty much a, a purebred uh, along straight breed lines. Where it, there's some more crossbreeding going on in America than there used to be. Crossbreeding, say, a Holstein with a Jersey to get a more hardy animal. It's in the best interest of a dairy farmer to care for the health and well-being of each cow. Frequent checkups with a veterinarian are a necessary part of a dairy cow's routine. We are practicing animal welfare every single day because if our cows aren't cared for, they're not going to give us the production that we need to sustain our business and our life as dairy producers. So without having good animal practices, we cannot stay in business because of our margins rely on the health of the animal. We have weekly vet checks. We have 24-hour uh, vet calls if we have issues. Uh, most dairymen are cattlemen as, as well, so we take care of a lot of issues. We also have uh, hoof trimmers where they get pedicures and they get hoof, hoof care once a week. And we just, uh, you know, we walk through cows daily. That's all we do. We have employees and we ourselves walk through cattle to make sure they're healthy. Um, if they have problems, we um, get them treated. The dairymen that we work with, it's in their best interest to keep animals healthy as, as healthy animals tend to produce more milk and therefore more profit. Health-wise, they tend to, we work a lot on things like vaccination to prevent disease. We work on uh, simple programs just to identify uh, sick animals. If there's any, uh, the few animals that do get sick, we can identify them early and treat them. I mean, they, they work hard to keep a very clean environment, provide them with uh, good food that uh, ensures that we continue to have healthy cows and, and again, productive cows. What tends to happen on these, particularly on these larger production units, we, we tend to be closely involved with training personnel on the dairies to help them identify those animals and how to treat common diseases. If it's a disease that's a little bit more complex, then it's something that we tend to be called in on. These guys are tra trained on the judicious use of antibiotics and so we, we're very careful about that. Again, very rarely needed, but when they are needed, the guys are well trained. Technology is an important tool for dairy farmers. Not only does it increase productivity, but it also guarantees a safe and consistent product. Using technology, we're able to assure um, top quality milk leaves our farm. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, and what it means for us is a more accurate way to identify the cows. It's more accurate and it's a more permanent form of identification. They hope to use it in the future to tie to a, a USDA database to help tracking of the animals. The purpose of tracking the animals would be for overall food safety and also for the animal safety in case of a large animal outbreak that could be a, a problem for food safety. If we don't take good care of the cow, then we don't have a good product to supply to the consumer. A dairy cow can eat the equivalent of 206 baked potatoes a day. A diet of rich and nutrient feed is required in order to produce great milk. What they eat may surprise you. The average dairy cow is going to see a nutritionist at least twice a month. A uh, nutritionist is going to come by the dairy and provide the rations for that particular group of cows. The basis of the ration is that fibrous product, be it hay, be it grass, uh, be it silage, but a fibrous product. Neat thing about a cow is when we're feeding a cow, we're really not feeding the cow, we're feeding the, the bugs in her rumen. A cow's digestive system consists of a four-chambered stomach. 
The first chamber acts as a storage and fermentation vat in which microbes digest and break down feed. The second chamber digests heavier and denser feed, while the third absorbs water and other digestive material. The fourth chamber, or the cow's true stomach, contains hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes to further break down feed. These bacteria are specifically uh, made to convert fiber into energy and protein. And that is what feeds the cow and that is what produces the milk. But also a lot of byproducts, products that, uh, that are out of date in the store, uh, all the way uh, to uh, cotton byproducts where we utilize the cotton from the cotton ball and the seeds is a good energy and protein source that we can utilize. The holes we can utilize as a fiber product. When a cow calves, she uh, in nature is going to feed that calf and the calf is small, but when it grows it's going to need more milk. So the cow has what we call a lactation curve, which means that she is going to start off with a minimal amount of milk and then increase her milk production to resemble what she would be feeding that calf in nature while it was growing. And so we try to mimic that in nutrition and, and what we try to do is to start her off with a ration that's going to get her on track with that lactation curve and get her up to peak milk, and which means that we need to increase one, the amount of feed, but also the, uh, the concentration of the energy and the protein in that feed. And of course that's beneficial for the dairyman, uh, that that cow is going to produce efficiently, and, uh, but that's also good for herself because that means that she can maintain herself, uh, that she can maintain her body weight and, and maintain healthy. Dairy farmers are dependent on the land. They are very conscious of the environment and strive to make good use of their resources. What we try to do on a dairy is for one, is utilize that water to go to drinking water which ultimately becomes milk. And secondly, the water that is being utilized to, to clean the facilities. We use our water three to five times basically. We use it first to, uh, to cool the milk, then we use it to, uh, in, the, in the cleaning of the process of the cows during, during milking, and then we uh, collect all that water back and then we use it uh, to uh, irrigate the crops. All dairy farms are required to, uh, to capture all the runoff water from all the holding pens and collection areas, and then we collect that water and divert it into uh, holding tanks, and then that water runs through natural nutrients and it collects nutrients on the way and then we put it on the fields and it is, it is far better than just plain water. That's our goal now is to, you know, to be sustainable for the future. You know, we're not sure with the volatility in all the markets these days and the recession and where we're going, you know, but we know one thing, the farm will be here and people need food and um, people need production agriculture just to stay alive. A single dairy cow can produce 20,000 pounds of milk a year. Now imagine a dairy that has hundreds or even thousands of cows. That's a lot of milk. To increase production, a variety of milking parlors have been designed to collect milk fast and efficiently. This parlor here, it's a double 40, what we call a double 40, so we have 80 cows in the parlor at any given time. We milk these cows every eight hours. Three, we have three eight hour shifts we operate. On this place, we milk about 3,000 cows, and so each cow produces about 75 pounds of milk, which equates to about nine gallons of milk per day. Once the cows are loaded in the parlor, an operator applies disinfectant to each teat. After it sets long enough to kill any bacteria, another operator takes a milk sample to make sure it's normal. The teats are cleaned off, and the milking machine is applied. It takes 12 minutes from the moment the cows are loaded and prepped in the parlor to when they're milked. The milk then travels through a stainless steel pipeline to a vat where it is filtered. After that, the milk goes through a cooling process. This whole process from the time it comes from the cow to the tank is about a 60 second operation. The body temperature of a normal cow is 101 degrees. It'll go from the 101 degrees to a 36 degrees in less than one minute. 